Well, guess what? Usually this time, Heather, this time of week, you and I are catching up with Ethan Foreman of the Gloucester Times and Erica Brown of the Cricket to just sort of get um, caught up on the, the week's headlines. Yeah, yeah locally. So yeah. we thought it would be great because Erica has to cover. Come on in, Erica. You can. Yeah, she has to cover Manchester and Essex. Exactly. Yeah. No easy feat. Yeah. <laughs> but here she is. To... <laughs> She's a publisher that covers two yeah. towns. Why not come to that? Okay, Katie has the best job in the world because this is essentially her. Oh my right? God. This is the backdrop of her office. Isn't this Isn't crazy? It's like the most beautiful spot. And how about this restaurant? On our, oh my God. Right? Incredible. Isn't it heaven? Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, you it's yeah. beautiful. Great to see you guys yeah. outside in person. Yeah. I know. Once we never again. do this. I brought my sunglasses in case I need them, but thankfully. No, Heather I, likes to I'm wear not them mine when she's off. talking to guests. Yeah. I don't. I, I, so I, glamorous. <laughs> exactly. It has a little mystery, and I don't exactly. squint so much. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, really. Okay, I'll just and take them off for a second. Okay. But no I'm one gonna... would know, right? <laughs> Can I show you something really quick? Yeah, that I got literally on my way here. Yeah. I got a package about Stuffy McGinnis. Oh, let me hold this up. From Stuffy. Yeah, from Mel George in Rockport. Oh, Mel George. I know Mel George. Yeah, and I guess, you know, he just sent me a whole package of the fact that he's been um, lobbying for Stuffy McGinnis, and you know this, to be in the Baseball Hall of Fame for over 30 years, and he said the next time it's going to be considered is like 2032. This is so funny to say that. Mel George's son, I was in a charity a golf event on Monday, Yeah. and uh, he came up to me then and said, hey, my dad's been trying to listen. Like, yeah, I used your dad's material to help me put this together. Yeah, and of course, this is all the work that Corey did, and then the cricket, we partner with you on it, and we've yeah. gotten, obviously, we've gotten some incredible feedback from it. Can I just read you this quote? This Go, is yeah, like, please I'm do. Sure you, this is from the New York Times in 19, yeah. 1918. The ninth inning saw the, the wise head of little Jack McGinnis <laughs> play an important role in the timely halt of another Cub rally. No player in the whole series has shown more baseball sense than the first baseman of the Red Sox. There you go. There you Gloucester, go. Manchester's own Stephanie McInnes, and he was playing alongside Babe Ruth for the Boston Red yeah. Sox when wow. they won their last World Series title in, what was it, 86 years or so back in 1918. Stuffy was there. It's a spectacular story, so I just wanted to show you that because I, I literally just got it. It's awesome. Yeah, it's almost criminal that this guy is not recognized. Criminal. Really. Like, how, you've got to get a ball field <laughs> named after this man. We're, that's, so that's, yeah, so that's our next go. task. So okay. anyway, so what uh, what's going on, Erica? What went on in Manchester and Essex this past week? Well, we've had, we have a lot of stuff going on, actually. I mean, um, one big thing, I think, I mean, can I get right into news news? Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. So um, we, the Water Resources uh, Task Force, so it's called the Water Protection Resources Task Force, they've been working away for, you know, unofficially for about six months, officially for about uh, three months in this 18-month charge to look into water, right? Water is a big theme, mm. right? And we started coverage of that with Chuck Dam. We did a big Q&A with him. I think you remember in the beginning of the year, it was yep. a full page because Chuck Dam, our DPW head, he used to be, he's the past president of the Massachusetts Municipal Water Association. So it's like, he's like no better person for like remember water. This, Amazing. The best damn, yeah. DPW, the best head damn head. DPW head. Yeah. So in any case, we happened to do a piece on the fact that man, last week, Massachusetts uh, named our region in a drought, level two drought. Did you know that? Okay, yeah. so that's sort of getting attention. So the, the selectmen took it up. Well, at the same time, it made it relevant that the Water Resources Task Force had just started discussing all the work looking into the water usage among Manchester users. And it was really interesting. <laughs> so who's the number one water user in, Mass in Manchester? You, we, the Athletic Club. Okay, very interesting. Wow. Okay, the Manchester Athletic Club. Yeah. And would you guess the same? Let's, for, it's not for the Singapore Beach Bathhouse. Like no, it, it ain't, although <laughs> whatever. Okay, so it's it's not surprisingly the 18-hole golf course, oh, uh, yeah, the yeah. Essex oh, County yeah. Essex Country County Club, right? Club, yep. So we have a very nice uh, Tony um, you know, country club in town, and they're the number one water user, although it is ironic that I found out afterwards that their 18 holes, they have a recharge system, and they don't use municipal water for that. So, yeah. but And yet they're still the number Wait, one user. They're not watering their grass with that? Uh, apparent, no, they have a state-of-the-art system, but they're, but they're using, still using the number one. So put that aside. Here's yeah. the here's the surprising part. So uh, commercial users in the top 20 are not a surprise, right? Yeah, right. As a, you know, Manchester right. Athletic Club, you'd be like, okay, of course they'd be there. The school, right. you know, of course. Right. You know, what, okay. Do you know that there are three private homes in Manchester? <gasps> private no homes way. in Manchester that each individually use more water per year than the 3,000-member Manchester Athletic Club. <laughs> what are these people doing? But, and, and by the way, the Manchester Athletic Club has locker rooms, two pools, yeah. and 3,000 members, and there's three homes. 
what and is, there are I, six homes, six homes, private homes, yeah. dwellings, not like, you yeah. know, compounds. <laughs> like, well, maybe I mean, they're a compound. I don't know. And six of them, of six Teenagers? of them, I don't know. I haven't <laughs> looked into it. Six of them use more water per year, each individually, than the Manchester Essex Regional High School. Wow. <laughs> What, are there water slides built into these places? I don't know, but I should go. Those are incredible statistics. It is incredible. But it, what it does is it forces the view that you say, when you talk about water usage um, and you walk, talk about resources, you automatically think of commercial things, commercial entities, you know, yeah. and they're the target. But the truth is, water is an equal opportunity so resource. Did you write that down in that little paper of yours? I did. So, I And did. are there addresses for the homes? No, no, no I would never do that. It's the cricket. Yeah, right, we don't right, do that yeah, with yeah, cricket. Okay, we don't but, do that. But, we don't shame people with cricket. Yeah. Okay, but that is, uh, will they know? Isn't that an interesting, it's a challenge. Yeah. And they're at the beginning of their task, and they're, they've got another year to go before they make recommendations. But they're looking, in all seriousness, um, Tom Keogh, who's a, he's on the task force, he's a former um, select board member, and he said, Back in 2016, there was a drought, much worse than this drought that mm -hmm. we're in right now. Um, it was like eight months long. It was really intense. And the Board of Selectmen put in restrictions. And he said that the highest volume users didn't amend their behavior at all. Like, he said a lot of them just refused to comply. And their attitude was, I have the money to pay for it, so I can, I can do this. And so I think there's going to be a change in how things are viewed. I think it's a different time now than mm -hmm. even it was in 2016. Um, but it really shows you that... You know, if you look at water and then you just follow the facts, uh, the story becomes the story. It's very interesting. So there you go. Well, uh. can, wait, can we add our favorite subject, or maybe not your favorite subject, mine, the 40B? That's your favorite subject? <laughs> Seriously? No, it's not. <laughs> no, it is, like, actually. Okay. I do think it's interesting. Okay. No, it is, let's say it is my favorite subject, okay? <laughs> okay. I'm putting that down. Yeah. All right, it is my favorite subject, and there was just a decision made by the town that the town has enough water to supply the 136 units. Is that right, in, the, in those well, peer review um, meetings? I mean, I, I'm not covering this topic, um, oh, but okay. I can tell you what that that probably wasn't a decision. No, it wasn't a decision. I, I think it was it's a, a fact, <laughs> right? Right, it's, right, it's, exactly. It's, 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 it's math. You say, okay, this is what the state allows us to have. It's this X number of millions of whatever, and this is how much is required for X, Y, Z. Hmm. And they, we ha we, you either have capacity or you don't have capacity for all sorts of things. And guess what? Cell signaling is coming in. That's going to be a ma That should be one of your favorite topics, right? It's a big biomedical Maybe. campus that's coming into <laughs> Manchester, yeah. and it's going to have a massive impact in a positive way in town. Um, and they've closed on 40 acres of land behind the Manchester Athletic Club. And they're going in there, and there's plenty of capacity, according to that math, for them. Huh. And they're coming after this. I'm simply saying that we're having a water discussion, and that seemed to be a water discussion. Yeah, well, can they tie off to the also, six residential they, houses? Yeah, there you go. That's where I was going. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they said there is enough capacity <laughs> yeah. for people who want to hook up, who are private citizens, who have homes, who want to hook up. Chuck Dam said there's enough capacity. Hmm. There's enough capacity for any planning for the limited commercial district, and that, yes, includes the 40B, it also includes cell signaling. Um, and so therefore, there's enough capacity because the whole system has been um, improved for the last 20 years and is working well. We're gonna be back here in a few years from now talking about 40B and where it's gonna move next in yeah. Manchester, I feel. Yeah. It just seems like it's getting Except punted, there. punted, punted, punted. Well, it, I mean, I could tell you what's happening. What's happening is they're about to have their last hearing at the end of the month. Yeah. Um, that's their last public hearing. Then they're going to continue, I think, doing hearings um, that are closed to the public in terms of participation. But they're, you're going to be able to see them, I think. You know, there's not going to be, yeah. they're not going to be executive session. And they have up to, I think they said 40 days, which means um, they'll make a decision. And Greg Federspiel, who's our town planner, has said that very many times, he says this is kind of his go-to, which I think is because he, he gets asked so much, is he said, listen, I think the fair gamble is, regardless of the decision, if they say yes or no, it's still going to go to Boston, where it's yeah. going to get appealed to the housing um, office department. And it probably is a couple years out before that decision is made. Yeah. So, Erica, so I want to ask, too, while we're si situated here in Essex today, Every ripple on the water, but the cricket and the Essex Echo. Yeah. And just a little a background on that and what it's like for you to be publisher and editor of, of, of in covering two towns. 
Yeah, it's, um, well, the Cricket was founded in 1888, mm -hmm. and the Essex Echo um, was a separate newspaper. It yep, yep. was found for Essex around the same time. Um, and then in 1923, I believe it is, the Cricket purchased the Essex Echo, and they started to cover it together. So the Essex Echo, if you looked at really old editions of it, they would cover Manchester yeah. topics, and then the Cricket would cover Essex topics, and then they merged. So I have the archive for the Essex Echo that goes through 1923, um, and then they merged, and then we cover it together. So in the last 20 years, the Essex part of the coverage has kind of softened a little bit. And my first, as a matter of fact, my very first meeting when I took over the paper three and a half years ago, my very first meeting was with Brendan Zabricki. Oh, really? Yeah, the, the, the town administrator. And he basically, of Essex, for any, in case anybody didn't know. And he basically, he's a very, very precise, polite man, right? He literally looked at me like, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> So now we cover Essex, and the, the way I think about covering Essex is Essex is a great story for anybody. Like for Manchester, our readers in Rockport, like our readers in California, because there's so many great features here and mm. stories and lifestyle pieces around here. So that's what I started with. I started with stories that really lifted up this area and were really cool because it is a distinct community and within Cape Ann. I mean, there's nothing like it. And we found that some of our best comments came from people in Manchester because they loved it. They thought huh. it was a really cool story. And then from that, we started to get into more municipal coverage. The saving grace, I have to say, is Brendan, he writes a, can I say kick ass? I mean, he writes yeah. an unbelievable report for the Board of Selectmen. And if you could go to the website and get it, it's really long and really hard to wade through, but we have that as almost a backdrop as well. So we have that, we have municipal coverage, we have features, and then we have Brendan in the, the sort of, you know, as that foundation for what's going on with at Town Hall yeah. on Martin Street. It's great. Right. Is there anything you wish you could cover better, Erica? Oh God. There's like such a long list, it's not even funny. I literally live by that list. I live, that's my, that's the source of my inadequacy. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the things I wish I could be doing, but I can't be doing, or where I wish I could be doing better. Um, I think that I'd love to do a bit, much better job of covering sort of what I call out and about coverage, things that are happening out and about. That's a column that ran in the Manchester Cricket for since the 1920s. It's called Out and About on Cape Ann. Yeah. And it used to be very charming and very society forward, you know. We make it more lifestyle because there's so many awesome things going on. I wish I could do more. I wish I could do more with food and culture and heritage of food um, because I think people really are interested in that. I wish I could do more with history. I wish I could do more with nature. And then, yes, of course, I wish I could do more with Town Hall at Essex. I wish I could because they're going back to in-person meetings. It's harder to cover them when they're not on Zoom. Um, but I'll get there. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's, I mean, look, it's a small newspaper, right? I mean, yeah. the circulation is less than 6,000 or so. That's just population is, what, 3,500? Yep. If exactly. that, yep. right? It's Manchester, 6,000 or so. Exactly. Yeah, somewhere yeah, in that ballpark. Not quite 6, yeah, but they're also, like, it they, they covers a lot of the, the area size. Yep. For I'm Essex, not, especially, is larger than you think. I'm going to tell you, like, a secret of a, somebody who runs a newspaper, and I just know this. And it's the thing that probably keeps me awake at night about new local newspapers more than anything else. You can be successful being a local newspaper. I've proven it. We've grown tremendously. But you have to invest in local content. It's like a really simple formula. It's hilarious. Mm. You literally have to focus on local. If you focus on local content and you give trustworthy, interesting, important coverage of what's going on locally, A, you'll have plenty of stuff to cover, number one. But number two, you can't get it anywhere else and people really want it. They're yeah. thirsty for it. Here's the problem. The problem is that the entire media industry is based on scale with the advent of social media. So you'll have 40 million followers on your YouTube channel. Well, guess what? That's not going to happen if you're trying to cover what is happening here really, really well. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest problem that local newspapers have. Mm. Mm. And yeah. thank God we have a supportive readership. We have a supportive area for you guys, for us. Yeah. Well, I we may be living parallel lives, Erica, you know? Well, I think working <clears throat> together is the only solution. Yeah. It really is. And I think people appreciate it as well. I mean, I think they do. <laughs> no, they do, for sure. We have, we have authenticity that... A yeah. genuine, a genuine love for for a local, and that's and it's there. And pulling each other's information is actually a really important part yeah. of it. You can't be greedy and, and, and miserly 
about your information. Mm -hmm. You should work with others and say, hey, if you want to cover this in the Gloucester Times, take it. Yeah, I tell people all the time, the content's meant to be shared. Like, you'll get out there. Like, let's collaborate and share. I get get paid. Well, I get (laughs) Yeah. I get back to that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the funniest things I I love, occasionally I get this where people are in the old kind of way of thinking and they'll call me up and they'll say, yeah, well, you know, I'd give this to you, but what about the Gloucester Times and da da da? Like they act like we're in competition, and they're always a little. Oh, I get that all the time. I about say, stuff. hey, no, it's all good. You go to the Gloucester Times. Yeah. You know why? Because I love the Gloucester Times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go. But, uh, yeah. You'll we're figure all it in out. It together. Are you working on anything particular? Or anything big coming up? No, but I think if I wanted to call attention to something that's light and fluffy, but actually absolutely awesome, is in the paper this week. Besides, like incredible pictures for the Crocs. Oh, it's a nice pictures. That was beautiful. Yeah. But. In all seriousness, Olivia Turner, Ollie Turner. Oh, we love Ollie. Your your old intern, my old intern, Mm -hmm. my current intern. She just did an incredible piece on, I'm not going to show it, but I I will show it, but not because I think you can see it. It's the... uh, Dig into ice cream around Cape Ann. Wait a she second. Out the best she just did sandwiches cone. a couple of weeks. I, I gave her a She's credit card. Who's yeah. having a better summer than Ollie Turner? In an ice cream cone <laughs> yeah. stand. And she went to five different places all over Cape Ann. And instead of like getting into this competitive, like that's the best. You know what I mean? Like, which I can't stand. Right. What she did is she went to everyone and said, give me your most popular. Yeah. And then she just did a piece on the most popular. Yeah. And this was really awesome. I What's think. most popular? Holy cow. The ice cream sandwich. It's uh, that's, it's that's it's a good. really yeah. premium ice cream sandwich. Um, it's like eight dollars, which mm-hmm. people think might think is expensive. Apparently, I get this from Ollie. It's off the hook. Amazing. It's really it's good. Really Do good. you know the most popular flavor at uh, Captain Dusty's in Manchester? I don't. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> I know it, 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 it's cinnamon. It's churro said. It's like, vanilla. Wow, it's vanilla. Oh, the most popular <laughs> Manchester flavor is vanilla. Oh, no pun intended. We're back to where we We're started. Back to yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, it is the truth though. So mm-hmm. Erica, it's always awesome catching up with I you. I love you guys. Uh, and great work with the cricket. I get the cricket every week. Shouldn't you folks? So <laughs> all right, thanks. And we'll catch up with you this time next week, right? Thank you. I can't wait. Yeah. And I'm sorry it won't be in person. We should do you should do this more often. I mean, oh this my is, god. You guys are doing an amazing job. Yeah, the three of us on the ducks yeah. and the Essex River. It's beautiful. They're, they're, they're gone. Yeah. They're, they're napping. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that puts a bow on it. Thank you, Erica, once again. That was fun, huh, Heather? That was great. I yeah, it's good to get back out here yeah. and get in the groove again. Really good. Yeah, we want to thank all of our guests today. Of course, Tom and Michelle Reardon, Ripple on the Water. Awesome stuff here, too. The food looks beautiful. We're going to sit down and have lunch now if you want to come and, uh, and join us, folks. Out there, also Katie Montgomery of the um, Essex Historical Society and Shipbuilding Museum. Uh, Vinny Caravella of the Scrapbook, All Prints and Maps. He's right behind the Old White Elephant Shop. Daisy Nell of the Gloucester Schooner Festival, and Erica Brown, of course, of the Cricket. We got to thank our crew, right? On camera, uh, Mike Dennis, floor manager, Alana Horn. Our production manager is Tyler Hinson, technical Her director. Hinson. 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 Right? Heather was right. Herenson? Herenson. Yeah. This is how it's spelled, folks H R Y N Y S Z Y N. Our production manager, Tyler, technical director, Matt McMakin, digital director, Matt Moore, our operations coordinator, Emily Games, and our executive director, Eric Archer. Heather, this was fun. It's so good. Looking forward to the next show. We don't know when that is, but we'll uh, keep you posted on that. Maybe around Scooterfest. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. In the meantime, come on down to 74 Main Street in downtown Essex for Ripple on the Water in a beautiful view of the Essex River, and we will see you next time on Cape Ann Today. Interested in a sponsorship? Email sponsor at 1623studios.org to learn more.